Hi, my name's Wayne Clements. Welcome to Art Studio. We're going to go straight into a painting and we're going to go around our board and our palette board and just go through our colours. So once again, I've got my titanium white. I've got some blues there, some Prussian blues, some yellow ochre I've tinted. I have some red violet, the trusty red violet. A little bit of orange there, not sure we'll use that. I've also mixed up some uh, red, I've just tinted it a little, and also got some burnt umber, some raw umber, and some blue violets. So we're going to move straight into this painting, and we're going right back out into the centre of Australia this time. So we've got a bit of white on our board already, so we're just going to just go over that. Well, actually, it's in Queensland, this one. So it's actually the old dingo fence. It used to be the dingo fence. It's the uh, wild dog fence, they call it. And we're going to put in a little bit of colour here, back on the right, back on the horizon line. So this is a, well, it's a great example of the experience of Australia in this painting. So we're going to do that. We're creating that, that outback look. And right out in central Queensland, the dingo fence, here we go. And we're going to put in a little bit of colour here, back down on the horizon line. Now these colours were taken straight off a photo, so... I'm going to change the painting a little bit, but the colour scheme is pretty well spot on. So if you're wondering about these colours in the outback, they're there. So just uh, be aware of that. Beautiful colours. Soft pastels. We're going to go straight into some violets now. We've got our blue violet across the top of the sky. And just creating that effect. We're not so much into the crisscross action, the cross hatching this time. We're more into the the straight strokes across your canvas just to give you that expansive look and that's what we're after. So we're just going to come down on the horizon line. So I've started up with my darks way out of the picture. There's no good me bringing my darks into here because it would have contaminated all these colours in the painting so we would have wiped all that out. Not what we're after. So we're just going to gently bring those colours down into the painting. Crisscross action just to get them to blend together but a full stroke through just to finish it off. So we're getting down there now, almost blending those colours together just nicely, coming up really well. Okay, it almost leaves that little bit more dark back up there on the top of the painting. A little bit of depth there. Okay, now in actual fact, we can use a fan or a knife and I can actually put a little bit of colour. I'm going to put a bit of white and just mix a little bit of this red violet colour that I've got going here, pick up a little bit of the red violet and put it back there in the distance, not too dark, just to give it that little bit of depth there and just blend that in with your brush. So just that wispy clouds way back in the distance. Once again creating the effect of depth, so or distance and depth in your painting and it's a great way to do it. Just add those few little things into your painting can make all the difference. Okay, so I'm going to go into one of my smaller brushes here and we're just going to put in some background mountains. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of blue and just go into some of my violet as well and just pick up a bit of a mountain range back here. So it's going to be way back into the distance, this range. So just roll your brush and get that effect of that background mountain. So we're just gently gliding it across and you can just take that value of that colour back a little bit by picking up a little bit of that pink and blending it into the into the background. We don't want it looking too even like hump hump hump. So we're going to go straight into our bit of our blue violet now and put that in front of that mountain. So it's a little bit closer so it's standing out. So the value of that colour is a little bit more dominant than the one behind. In fact, we can even give that a little bit of a ridge there just to make it look interesting. So once again, we're not following an exact guide from our background range. We're just putting in the colours as we see fit. It's great exercise, this, if you want to learn how to paint. You have to create your own paintings at some stage. So this is one way of doing that, gaining a bit of experience. And we're just going to dribble that along there. and mountain range back in the distance, just forward of the one right back in the distance. So we've now got a distance and we've got a far distance with that background mountain range there. In fact, I almost like to bring that up just a little bit more. 
that's what you've got to look at. Step back, have a look at it, make sure nothing's too even and just put those colours in gently. Right, we're going to pick up one of my two inch brushes now, a little bit of white. We're going to pick up a bit of this yellow ochre colour I've got in the, that we had in the sky and I'm just going to put that back into the way back into the distance. So where the light's going to be a bit lighter than the foreground, so we've got it further away. So we're going to pick up that colour back in the distance there. If anything, we can pick up a little bit of this as well, just to push it back. We don't want it too light, so we're just going to take the sting out of that background colour just a little bit and just pat it down. Now we're going to go straight into this colour, which is our red violet. It's got a lot of white in it. Red violet's a very strong colour, so you don't need too much out of the tube to get you uh, get you going. So, good idea if you're ever mixing that violet, that blue, the red violet, is to just put a little tiny smidgen out first and then add add lots of uh, white to it and you will soon get to know the colour and how, how strong that hue is. So just gently blending that as we go back there so it gives it a gradient. So we're going from dark to light. So that's, what, that's the effect we're after. So darken it up and as you get further back, just we're lifting that brush away from the canvas and just going nice and light so it can go almost go into the dark down here too. So we're going to have it nice and dark down the bottom. And we're going to give that stony effect that you might have seen us do before in a few other demonstrations. And that's flicking the ground with a bit of fore, with a uh, fan brush to give us that a foreground look. And it is a great effect. So we're just going to do that. If you had to sit there and paint every little stone and every rock, we'd be here for a month. So one way around that is to actually create the effect and that's what it's all about, it's just creating the effect, impression, giving the impression of there there's a, uh, a stony foreground, even if there's just paint. So that's what we're doing. That's looking really good. Now, if anything, I can probably get a few little background trees happening here. We can do that with our dark, so we can just put it along, pick up a bit of my burn umber as well, or raw umber, just to darken that violet up. So we're just going to go along the painting here and put in a few little background trees, little bushes. Just makes it look interesting back there against that background mountain just to make it look all the more interesting. We're going to throw in those little bit of foliage, bit of trees back in the distance there and all the way over here to the end just to bring your eye in towards the centre. And in fact, we can just run that brush backwards and forwards just to give the effect of that bit of shadow on the ground there back in the distance. Not much, you don't need much. So that's all we need to do. And in fact, we can even just clean that brush and put a little bit of light on there on some of those trees or that foliage back in the distance. We'll even use the same brush. Doesn't need much. Just a little bit of light across the top of those. Might be a bit too much. A bit of pink in there as well, with that colour in the sky. That's where it comes from, so it'll be in the painting. So if you've got those lights, it's going to pick up that colour that we've got in the sky. That's where it comes from. There it is. Beautiful. Look at that. It makes all the difference. It's way back in the distance. We're not even going to notice this by the time we finish this painting, but that's what people want to see, that little bit of depth. See how much detail you've put in your painting. That's what we look for. And even if it is back in the distance, back in the, right back in the background, so just pat that down gently and we're going to put in a wild dog fence very shortly and we're going to bring it from here starting over here and it's going to run back across the painting over to there. So we can even start by doing that, give that effect of the shadow of the fence coming along the ground and then we're going to put the fence in. We might just take a short break just before we do that. We're going into the darks here now. So there's the dark effect. And then we're going to spatter the ground. And we're going to have a dead tree over in this section right here, just to balance our painting up. It's actually in this scene, so there's not too many dead trees in there, but one dominant one in the foreground. Flick a few little things back up in the distance there. And we're just about ready to take a break. I'll just fan those out quickly, just those, especially those ones back in the distance there. 
So there we go. So if you're not happy about that, if you've got that too dominant back in there, look, you can always do a bit of this. Pick up a bit of that colour that you've got and just gently take it back. Soften it just that little bit, that's okay. Got that little bit of light back in there. Okay, we're just gonna come back shortly and we're gonna finish off the painting. Um, just assess how you're going, keep up to speed with your colours, etc. And we'll come back and have a look at it very shortly. We'll see you then.